Hanukkah, the festival of lights, eight nights of menorahs, dreidels, latkes, jelly donuts. But wait a minute. I don't remember reading anything about Hanukkah or the festival of lights in the Bible. And if it's not in the Bible, why would we want to participate in a man-made holiday? Isn't Hanukkah just the Jewish version of Christmas anyway? If you've ever thought about this, then this is the episode for you. Hang around for this holiday special of 5-Minute Torah. Shalom Torah Tribe, you are watching the channel that connects disciples of Yeshua to the eternal Torah of God. Welcome to my holiday episode covering the upcoming holiday of Hanukkah. Just to kick us off, let me give you a little background about myself and how I learned about Hanukkah. Growing up in the church, I always loved certain Bible stories because the underdog turned out to be the hero and God did the impossible through them. Stories like David and Goliath, Gideon and his 300 men, Moses facing down Pharaoh, etc. Although these are more than just stories, reading them is a shot in the arm for those of us who like to see the weaker and unlikely candidate win the battle and God's strength be revealed through them. Many years ago, I learned of another epic underdog battle that our Bibles allude to but never tells us about. However, all of the Israelites in the time of Yeshua knew about it and celebrated it. In the Gospel of John, we read, At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Yeshua was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. This is John chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. Growing up, no one ever mentioned this Feast of Dedication, and I never really paid any attention to it. As an adult, however, when I began studying the Hebrew Scriptures more closely, I realized that this feast wasn't listed anywhere in the Bible. When I discovered the underlying story behind the festival, it would end up becoming one of my all-time non-biblical biblical stories. Let me explain. During the intertestamental or deuterocanonical period, the so-called 400 years of silence between what we commonly call the Old and New Testaments, there was actually quite a bit going on that most Christians don't ever hear about. One of the most epic stories you will ever hear about is the destruction of Jerusalem by the Seleucid king Antiochus IV and how a small band of Jewish rebels defeated his mighty army and rebuilt the city, rededicating God's holy temple as the very first act of their triumph. It's a long story, but the bare bones version goes something like this. Around 200 years ago, before the time of Yeshua, Antiochus IV marched down from Western Asia to attack Egypt, a longtime rival. But his victory was cut short when Rome intervened and he had to call off the attack. Antiochus had to travel through Israel on his way back home. Upset about the Roman interference and wanting to recoup some of his war expenses, Antiochus decided to rob the temple treasury in Jerusalem. This upset the Jews greatly and they rebelled against his actions. Antiochus, who had named himself Epiphanes, which means God manifest, saw this as an affront to his deity and dealt a heavy and swift blow against the Jews. He had thousands of Jews killed. He ransacked the temple and he enacted a series of laws that, if followed through, would have wiped out the Jewish people and the religion. The scrolls of God's law were burned. The people were forbidden to observe the Sabbath. They were forbidden to circumcise their children. They were forced to eat unclean meats that God forbade his people to eat. And they were commanded to worship idols. Well, unfortunately, during this period, there were already a great number of Jews who had become Hellenized, adopting Greek culture and values over the biblical ones from the covenant God made with them at Sinai. They wanted to fit in with the rest of the world. They were tired of being different. They were tired of sticking out like a sore thumb. They were tired of having their diets restricted when their pagan neighbors could eat anything and everything they wanted. They were tired of saying, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. They were tired of being the odd man out. Rather than resisting the howling winds of change, they had succumbed to the darkness surrounded them. Well, the ruthless domination of Antiochus was the tipping point that pushed even greater numbers to take this even further and deny their faith in order to spare their lives. They were broken to the point of exchanging their Jewish faith for paganism and idolatry. But one of the priests, his name was Matatyahu or Matthias, refused to follow these laws made by a man who thought himself to be God. He knew who the real God was, and he knew that God didn't want them to forsake him and his ways. 
He and his sons began a series of strikes against the foreign army using guerrilla warfare tactics. Each time they went into battle, they prayed that God would grant them victory over their oppressors and be glorified through their efforts. They won battle after battle against all odds. Eventually, the foreign power was pushed out and the Jewish people set to work to restore God's holy temple that Antiochus had defiled with the abomination of desolation prophesied about in the book of Daniel, a sacrifice of pork to the pagan god Zeus on the holy altar of God. Exactly one year to the day from when the temple was defiled, the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev, they began an eight-day dedication service to celebrate its restoration. Well, according to Jewish tradition, they only had enough oil to last one night. However, God provided a miracle, and the oil lasted all eight days of the dedication. The light of the temple menorah shined in the darkness through the eight nights and became a symbol of the triumph over darkness. These eight days would be commemorated each year after that, beginning on the 25th of Kislev. According to John's Gospel, the name of this festival is the Feast of Dedication. You probably know it by its popular name, Hanukkah, because Hanukkah is the Hebrew word meaning dedication. Yeshua was in the Holy Temple observing the Feast of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, giving thanks to his Father that his holy house had been restored and rededicated nearly 200 years previously. Why shouldn't we celebrate the miracle of its restoration as well? Well, now that you know the backstory, Hanukkah isn't a Jewish replacement for Christmas. It's something entirely different. It's a time to remember how to shine our lights in the darkness and how to resist the temptation to assimilate into our surroundings. It's a time to remember that not only is Yeshua the light of the world, but He has commissioned us to be the light of the world as well and to shine forth the light He has placed within us. It's a time to remind our children of how a few people can make a difference and how they can make a difference. Well, if you'd like to read the full account of the Hanukkah story and learn how to celebrate it with your family, please consider picking up a copy of my book, Eight Lights, a Hanukkah devotional for followers of Yeshua. With an introduction to the traditions with explanations, the complete book of 1 Maccabees, and Yeshua-centered devotions for each of the eight nights with discussion questions, Eight Lights will inspire your family to shine your light brighter than ever. We'll see you soon with another Messianic insight into the eternal Torah of God. Blessings from Amet HaTorah.